Hello everyone, I'm Seth Ander and today we're going to make a stopwatch using C-sharp. We'll create a display for the time, minutes, seconds and centiseconds and three buttons. One to start the clock, one to stop and one to reset time. Let's get started. On this project we'll start by doing the design, by putting the numbers and the buttons. And then we'll add the timer object to keep track of the time for us. And finally we'll add the code to give the button some actions and to update the time on the screen. Let's start by creating a new project and choose Windows Form Application and give some name to our project. Let's say stopwatch. And now let's populate our form. Let's increase a little bit, put some labels that will have the numbers that we want. Let's say the text will be 00, zero for minutes and it will be called on the design will be called label minutes. We also want this to be bigger, so let's increase our font size to let's say 30. Seconds. And let's add some buttons. Button 1, it will have the text start and let's call it button start, copy, paste, paste. Now let's add the timer object to our project by clicking and dragging the timer onto our form. Let's make it enable to work and let's make it tick every 10 milliseconds or 1 centisecond. And now let's start putting some code to our project. Let's double click on the form and it will create on our code section a method that will run when the project starts. And when it starts, we want a few variables, let's call them time in centiseconds to be equal zero, time in seconds to be equal, oops, to be equal zero, and the time in minutes to be equal zero. Let's declare these variables here at start outside. They are all integers, call it seconds, and now let's start adding some function to our buttons. The start, if we click the start button, we want to make the clock to be active. Let's create a new variable called bool is active. We'll start by being false. It's not active at when it's created. And when we click the button start, it starts counting time. So it say is active equals true when we click the start button. When you click the stop button, it stops being active. So is active equals false. And when we press the reset button, we might want it to stop. Let's say is active equals false. And we want the time to be zero. But we've got already here the same formula that we're going to use. So let's create a new function so we don't have duplicated code. Let's call this, this function reset time. It will give error, so let's press control and dot and let it generate for us the function reset time. And for it, let's control paste the function. And let's replace this by the function time. This one is false. Now we want to connect our code with the timer. So let's go back to the form and double click on the timer. It will create a function for us that will run every time it ticks. Now we've set it to tick 10 times per millisecond or once each centisecond. So every time it runs, we'll say that time in centiseconds has increased by one. But this will only be true if the clock is active. Now, when the time in centiseconds reaches 100, it means that one second has passed. So the time in seconds is incremented by one and the time in centiseconds is rejected. Now, if the time 
in seconds reaches 60, what happens? That's right. It means that a minute has passed. So let's increment minutes and reset the time in seconds. And now we want also now we also want the function to and now we also want this method to update the clock on the screen. So let's create a new function called draw time. Let's press control dot and generate method. And here we'll say that label that holds the centiseconds value is text will be equal. I could write just time in centiseconds, but that's not what I want because I want it to have always two numbers. So I'll put here string format that will take one argument and will have the format of two numbers. And the arg argument that I'll put here will be time cs. Let's do the same for the other two. And now it should be ready. Let's get a look. And we see that we've got a problem here. We want this with two numbers and not just one. And I think the error is this one because it doesn't take a comma. But, and it should work fine now. Great. Let's start. It runs. Stop. It stopped. And when it resets, it goes back to zero. Wonderful. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.